Hello there and welcome to another crypto review. My name is Riley and today we're going to be taking a look at a cryptocurrency which has been getting a hell of a lot of attention from all around the community and that is Cardano. So as you know with all my cryptocurrency reviews if you haven't watched any of my videos I'm going to put each of these headings down in the description box below with a timestamp next to them so that you can go to that part of the video if you just want to see a specific portion of it. So I'll just let you look at those just quickly I won't go through them just to save time. And without further ado, let's just get straight into it, shall we? Alright, so let's start with the basics. And first we want to talk about what is Cardano. And well, Cardano is a project which is aiming to develop a smart contract platform which does not have the flaws of current other platforms like Ethereum. And it plans to bring new technological features with it. The cryptocurrency used on the Cardano platform is known as ADA. And for the ADA coins, we currently have circulating about 26 billion coins with a total supply of 31 billion coins, which is actually quite a lot of coins. But um, I'll sort of explain why there's so many coins later on in the video. So some features of Cardano. Um, first of all, its blockchain language is Haskell. And this is not a very popular language, um, but it is a mathematical language which is really, really secure. And that's sort of really what Cardano is all about. They want to create a nice, secure, robust protocol. And for their protocol, they use a proof-of-stake algorithm known as Ouroboros. And this is a really highly secure protocol which has been built upon peer review um, academic research. And so what happens for Cardano, it's really based on a lot of maths and a lot of academia and science. And so when they are developing things for the platform, they will have a global network of researchers and scientists upon which they will propose ideas and these ideas will be peer reviewed before being implemented. It was developed, Ouroboros was developed um, with help from the University of Edinburgh, at University of Connecticut, the IOHK, which I'll get into in a second, and the U to Tokyo University of Technology. And this is what I mean by that global network. They've got people all around the world of great academic standard. It also, this um, proof of stake uh, algorithm really solves one of the big scalability issues faced by proof of work um, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and that is using energy and energy is not really an aspect of scalability that people talk about too much. It's often things like transaction volume, fees and transaction times. They also have blockchain based governance and so decisions regarding the future of the cryptocurrency in the platform uh, can be voted on by holders of the token, the ADA, to ADA token I should say, and then they, once they have been voted in they will be enacted into the protocol. This will probably arise in the form of a sort of a library where the protocols can be made and put forward and then people who are holders can vote upon those um, proposals. This, what this does, it's likely to prevent a hard fork due to the level of democratization. However, any of new features that will be implemented will be very difficult to remove as it will be written into code and this is a really a thing where code is law. Also, the framework needs to be put in place to ensure that trolling is not an issue in the community in terms of voting and that the community can be um, trusted when making decisions about the platform. So now I want to talk about a bit more of the technical side of Cardano. And the first, I want to talk about the couple of layers of Cardano. See, it uses two layers. And the first layer is the Cardano, Cardano Settlement Layer, or the CSL. And this is basically all code re relating to accounting and payments. So like your token metrics, uh, balances and transaction things, all to do with the ADA token. And then the second layer is the Cardano control layer. And this is basically where all the smart contract functions exist, as well as regulatory features like digital identity. And if you saw my NEO video, you will know what a digital identity is. Smart contracts can be executed with or without the use of metadata, unlike Ethereum or NEO, and this is a really good thing for scalability as it can really streamline smart contracts and reduce the sort of bulkiness of the contracts that NEO and Ethereum more so really has now. This also allows for scalability and other updates to be formed, performed on the computational layer without disturbing the settlement layer, and this is a really good thing because it really... Um, I guess it 
keeps everything flowing nicely without having to worry about sort of issues bugging the system. And these two layers allow for Cardano to be efficient and simple whilst being robust and flexible. And this is like sort of they're, what they're trying to do is they're trying to be a hybrid of sort of a decentralized currency like Bitcoin or Litecoin and a smart contract platform like Ethereum or NEO. So now let's get into how this sort of blockchain works. And first of all, I want to talk about epochs. And an epoch is a bigger period of time for which it is known in advance. So that it's a set period of time of who you, which you will know who will have the right to gener generate a block in each slot. And what is a slot? Well, within epochs are little slots. And slots, slots are basically the blocks uh, created by something called slot leaders. And a slot leader is a node who is randomly picked by an algorithm to verify the next block. So they're the equivalent of miners on the Cardano chain. And what happens is they become a slot leader for a block, they verify that block, and then they step down and let another node verify the next block. And the more tokens you own, the more likely you are to become elected as a slot leader. It's sort of like winning a lottery with more lottery tickets. And so if you don't really understand, I'm going to give you a simple analogy for it. Epochs are just like a roster at your workplace, like your work schedule for the whole sort of workplace or company. And it can run for an arbitrary amount of time, just like a roster, e.g. a week or a month. And each slot is like equivalent to a single work shift by a single person. And only one person can be working that shift or slot. But nonetheless, someone has to be working that slot or shift. And then after that shift or slot is finished, they will hand over to someone else so they can begin their shift or their slot. All the fees from the epoch are collected into a big fee pool and then redistributed after this um, epoch has occurred to all the slot leaders. Next thing, all the current nodes are currently owned by Cardano and are, they are fully centralized at the moment. However, staking features will be implemented sometime in quarter two of 2018 or quarter two of this year. They also have something called the treasury, which basically 25% of each block reward is placed into a treasury. And this is a decentralized treasury where only it can only be accessed through a voting system. And it, this is going to be used for things like funding research projects and development comps for Cardano like in the future. And what this does, it's really cool because it solves the problem of how competing blockchains will support themselves after the parent companies are gone. For example, the big question for Ethereum is what happens to it after Vitalik Buterin goes and the Ethereum Foundation sort of fizzles out. So that's a cool thing to um, sort of think of, which I don't think people really think of just yet, but at some stage people will have to sort of take that into account. So why is it useful? And the first reason is peer review. And I said before, it's peer reviewed. All the technology before being implemented is peer reviewed by a lot of researchers and scientists all over the world to ensure that it is a gold standard technology and product while also building a high secure code. And this is very important as you've seen a lot of uh, very destructive hacks in things like the DAO and the Parity Wallet hack more recently. It is also very, very scalable. And first off, it uses a proof of work. I mean, a proof of uh, proof of stake algorithm, I should say, um, for to deliver a lot lower energy consumption. It has a dual player, dual layer platform, which enables it to be more streamlined and allows the two layers to work independently of each other. And also, something that's really cool. There's a video that Charles Hoskinson, the um, leader, one of the leaders of uh, Cardano did, where he explains how slot leaders can manage blocks on multiple chains and multiple e epochs can be run simultaneously, which is really cool. Both of these enable a blockchain that can support scaling solutions like side chains, which is having different other chains which are all interconnected, and sharding, which is basically chunking up the blockchain into little parts to reduce the workload. And if you want to see that video that Charles Hoskinson did explaining more about how this works, I'll put it down in the description box below so you can go check it out. I really do recommend it because it's a really good video. 
So the team in the community behind Cardano, and they've got quite a big sort of like team behind it because they have three main foundations. And the first off is the Cardano Foundation, and this is the non-for-profit organization which promotes Cardano, provides blockchain education, and works with the governments on sort of implementing this. And this is a big thing because the Cardano Foundation is trying to also move into that reg tech area. Input Output Hong Kong, and this is IOHK, the people that I mentioned before. This is an engineering company that develops blockchain solutions led by Charles Hoskinson and Jeremy Wood. And both of these guys, Charles Hoskinson was the former CEO of Ethereum, and Jeremy Wood is a former executive uh, assistant of Ethereum as well. Uh, Charles Hoskinson is also uh, very respected in the community because of what he's done with Ethereum and he's also worked on a lot with building BitShares which is another big cryptocurrency. And the third part of the team is Emergo and this is a Japanese company which aids businesses in integrating blockchain technology and they connect businesses with the Cardano blockchain and this is a big thing because this is basically... Um, I guess how you get people to use you need utilization to promote the blockchain and utilization um, really helps with Mattis adoption um, obviously because you need people to use it in the early stages to promote it and show that it's good and show that it works and all three of these basically if you look at them and what they do they're sort of three different companies and foundations that work together to create a synergistic I guess team and the community for Cardano, um, they have recently a really rapidly growing community, especially for a new cryptocurrency. On Twitter, they currently have about 65,000 Twitter followers. Charles Hoskinson, one of the leaders, has 40.5k 40, 40 followers on his um, Twitter as well, his personal account. And also, they do a lot of regular updates where they re, uh, update the roadmap every 30 days. So that's a really good thing because it means development and it means transparency with the team, which is something that you really want to look for. In terms of buying and storing, first off, I'll, just so I don't have to click off, the storing options, you only have one currently, and I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's Daedalus Wallet. Um, this is an official wallet which is developed by the team and it seems to be working so good so far. Um, however, I haven't heard much on um, any other support for new wallets coming in the future other than Ledger Nano S wallet support coming, I believe, sometime this year. And so in terms of buying Cardano, the main two places I would look to buy is either Bittrex or Binance um, or these other the exchanges that not really exchanges that too many people use and they don't really have much liquidity but if you haven't signed up for one of these you're probably going to have trouble doing it now because they're really getting bottlenecked with the amount of people who are trying to sign up and they can't take any more in at the moment but if you've been in the cryptocurrency for at least a little bit cryptocurrency space I should say you probably have one of these exchanges also the future of ADA and first I want to talk about the roadmap and first thing we have is the Shelley implementation, and this is quarter two, 2018. And first, this is quite a lot of things. This is sort of the, I guess you'd say the groundwork for the Cardano blockchain, uh, because this is where they're going to be implementing the proof of stake. Uh, then they're going to be adding multi-sig, which is basically transactions which require more than one signature to verify it. Um, quantum resistant signatures, which although not relevant really just yet they will be relevant sometime in the future light clients so this would just be a way to streamline the um, the clients for average users like you and me so we don't have to use like download the whole blockchain and it can increase the efficiency of the process have the voting center launch which is kind of like that library thing that I was talking about for before where proposals will be held and people can vote for them and also a debit card where you can use your Cardano to pay like another Visa card, basically. And then there's the, the next place, or uh, well, the next section of the roadmap is, I think it's Guijin or Guijin or something like that. And I think it's coming sometime in 2018, probably the next half of 2018, where they're looking to implement side chains and then deploy their virtual machine with um, side chain and smart contract implementation into the actual main blockchain. 
And I know what you're probably thinking, man, that's a lot. And yes, it is a lot. But if they can do this, that is going to be a really, really good feat. And I'm going to see a lot of positivity for the future of Cardano if they do it. And so just a couple of points from me. My thoughts, this project is hugely ambitious in what it's trying to do. And it has the potential to take on the whole crypto space by itself. Because it's really, it's trying to be a blend between a decentralized currency like Bitcoin and a development platform like Ethereum. And that's probably the two biggest markets we have in cryptocurrency right now. And if it can do this successfully, man, the sky's the limit for this coin. Like, I really do love the idea of this coin. But that leads me on to my next point. And although it is such a great project and I really do like it, the current market cap is just way too unjustified. And I'm going to look at that now as we go into the technical analysis. So first of all, actually, before I go into the charts, I want to have a look with the market cap. I want to talk about a couple of things. We can see here that Cardano is currently at a $25 billion market cap. And this is for a cryptocurrency that has been around for only a couple of months right? I want to just compare a few things for you just to gain a bit of perspective. If we look at the Ethereum charts here, Ethereum is something which has been around for quite a while now. Uh, it's been basically the second cryptocurrency for a long time now. And we can see here from basically June to late November last year, Ethereum was sitting at a similar market cap to what Cardano is now. And although you can argue that the cryptocurrency market as a whole has grown a lot since then, it's just it's not justified because Cardano is just an idea still. And like I said, I do love the idea, but it, the key word is an idea. It's just an idea still. It does not have a platform. It does not have any products being worked on it. Like Ethereum, although it may not be perfect, it has had a long history of people launching ICOs and different... Um, <clears throat> different tokens and platforms on the Ethereum blockchain. And that's just something which doesn't really make sense to me um, because basically there's $25 billion. This is a $25 billion idea. Um, and it's kind of crazy because we have things like other things, like I'm not trying to promote or shill this cryptocurrency here, but like Stellar Lumens is a great platform which is being used currently and has working partnerships with good companies like IBM, yet it's only worth half of what Cardano is. It's only worth, this working platform is only worth half of an idea, which is really something to think about. And that really leads me on to my next point with the technical analysis. And as we can see here, we've just had this absolutely huge run up. We've gone basically, what is that, 30 x over the last sort of jesus over the past month basically the past six weeks we've gone up 30x like that's crazy especially for a market cap this high and as we can see we're starting to pull back a bit but to be honest i would not buy any now i will buy some when it does go lower um because i really do love the project i do think it's going to be a great project for the future and a great long-term hold but short term, I'm definitely not buying any. And although I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice, I really would have, I, yeah, I would not buy any personally because this is just so overextended that it's just not funny. Um, even if it does go up a little more from here and it say shoots up to maybe like 10,000 Satoshis, you've got to think about the fact that the bigger it is, the harder it's going to fall. And like we always, everyone on the cryptocurrency space on YouTube and around the community tries to tell people, buy low, sell high. It's an easy thing in theory, but not a lot of people do it because they get caught up in FOMO. And I do think that this will go down. Why? Because I think over the next few weeks to months, I think we're going to have a shift in the transfer of value and wealth from the cryptocurrency market. We might have a full market pullback which I do think we will probably hit around maybe around the trillion dollar mark. But I do think we're going to see a lot of money moving back into Bitcoin over the next few months. And some of the alts that have run up hugely like this are really going to bleed out. So yeah, that's basically my two cents on it. I wouldn't buy any now, but I'd look to get it around once it really starts to pull back around these safer levels around here.
With that said, I'm going to wrap up this video here. If you liked this video or found it helpful, please leave a like and a comment below and comment on another cryptocurrency that you would like to see me review in the future. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I'll be bringing out future videos in the near future as well. I'll catch you later.